In this lecture, we're going to be talking about single phase half wave rectifiers with resistive loads. So let's go ahead and draw the circuit for this rectifier. As you can see, the circuit is very simple. In fact, this is the simplest type of any rectifier there is, including single phase, three phase, or control and uncontrolled rectifiers. And it has only one diode. Um, and so to understand how the circuit works, let's go ahead and draw the input and output voltages in a pair of axes. Let's assume that the input voltage is a perfect sinusoid. Um, so let's go ahead and draw it. It peaks at pi over 2, goes back to 0 at pi, peaks on the negative side at 3 pi over 2, and then goes back to pi. And this, of course, repeats. And so remember that diodes conduct when they're forward biased, meaning that the voltage from the anode to the cathode is positive. And remember that the anode for a diode is this point right here and the cathode is this terminal right here. And so when this voltage, let's call it VAK, is positive, then the diode conducts. So it looks like a short circuit. And so what that means for the output then is that when the input voltage VN is positive, so from pi, or excuse me, from zero to pi of the input voltage, then the output voltage is going to look exactly like the input. So it's going to look like this. However, when the input voltage goes negative, so when VAK is negative, in other words, from pi to 2 pi on the input voltage, then the diode looks like an open circuit, so it does not conduct. And therefore, there's no current flowing through the circuit, and which means that the output voltage V out has to be zero. So the output voltage then from pi to 2 pi is 0. So it's going to look like this. And then, of course, this also repeats. And so for a resistive circuit like this, then let's define one more thing. The output current. The output current is going to be of the same shape as the output voltage. Remember that V equals IR. Which means that I equals V over R. So then the output current is going to look just like the output voltage with a different magnitude, of course. So it's going to look like this, then zero again, and then this repeats again. So this point right here would be V over R and this point right here would be V or output voltage. So now let's go ahead and look at a numerical example and we're going to compute the output average voltage to see how this circuit compares to other types of circuits. Okay so let's go ahead and give a value to Vn. We're going to say that it's equal to 120 volts RMS at 60 Hertz. So that's the typical residential voltage in the United States. So if we were to express VN in time domain form, it would be equal to 170 volts sine 377T. So the 170 comes from the fact that the RMS voltage is equal to 1 over the square root of the peak voltage. In other words, the peak voltage of an RMS voltage is root 2 times the magnitude. So in this example, since we're saying that the input voltage is 120 volts RMS, then the peak of the sine wave is going to be at approximately 170 volts. And then the 377 comes from the fact that the angular frequency of a sine wave is equal to 2 pi f. So 2 pi times 60 
is equal to 377. And so that's going to become important when we draw the actual waveforms on a pair of axes. So let's go ahead and do that. So Vn is going to look like this. It's going to peak at pi over 2, go back to 0, and come back to 0. And the peak of that waveform is going to be at 170 volts. And the peak on the negative side is, of course, going to be at uh, minus 170. And like we discussed, the output voltage is going to be exactly like the input. So it's going to be positive, then back to zero. And it's going to repeat after that. And the peak of that is also going to be equal to 170 volts. Now, remember that current is equal to V over R. So I equals V over R, which in this case is 170 volts over... 10 ohms which is equal to 17 amps so the output current is going to be just like the output voltage it's going to be positive then zero then positive again and the peak of that is going to be 17 amps so one way to compare the performance of this rectifier to other rectifiers that we're going to look at next is to compute the average of the output voltage which is essentially the DC voltage at the output. So we're going to do a little bit of math but let's define the average of the output voltage V out in brackets and the average of any waveform is defined as 1 over the period times the integral over the period of the sine wave. So in our case, we're going to do 0 to the period of Vn dt, which is going to be equal to 1 over 16.6 .6 times the integral from 0 to 8.3 of 170 sine 377t. And so a couple of things that I did here is first the period of this waveform is going to be 1 over its frequency. So it's going to be 1 over 60 which is equal to approximately 16.6 .6 milliseconds. And another thing that I did here is I defined an integral from 0 to 8.3 milliseconds because we know that for the second part of the wave the output voltage is 0. So I don't have to compute the integral of the sine weight over that period because it's 0. For the output. So if you were to compute this integral, you're going to get a result that's approximately 0 0.319 of Vn, in this case 170. So for our example, the average of the output voltage is approximately 54.23 volts. So we're going to use this number to compare the circuit to other circuits that we're going to look at um, to see how this performs in comparison to other types of rectifiers.